Now, we're seeing in some senses, I mean, I think it's not as bad as in America, but we're seeing yeah. a little bit of the same sort of thing here, at least initially, you know, with the mockery of, of uh, and the attacks on, on uh, Scott Morrison for sending... Uh, people evacuated from China, not just Chinese, but also uh, non-Chinese Australians, to Christmas Island. I mean, really the second guessing and also the, the attacks on, oh, there's so much confusion about the message about keeping children at school. There's so much confusion. The only confusion I see is being spread by the ABC. Well, the ABC is highly confused. I mean, Norman Swan is being presented by the ABC as the Australian expert, the go-to person for comment on this. He is confused because last week he said the schools should be shut and then he said perhaps they shouldn't be uh, and now he's saying maybe, uh, maybe not now. So the ABC is giving very many different messages because many of the medical experts they have on, and I heard one as I came to the program today on, on, on the PM program, many of the medical experts they have on are contradicting their so-called expert uh, Norman Swan, who's not an expert because he, whilst he has medical qualifications, he doesn't have any qualifications in disease control. So the ABC interviews these highly qualified men and women, uh, one of whom, as I said, I heard today, uh, this evening, and they say one thing, but they're actually contradicting Norman Swan. So you're getting all these various messages on the ABC, but the ABC says that Dr. Swan's the answer, and you saw that again on Q&A uh, last night where Dr. Swan was on, but he was on as a non-expert but he was on with a woman from Melbourne and a, and, and a man from Canberra who were experts. So, yeah. so well, what, what you, can what I say? It's mean, ongoing criticism. Yeah. It, it sure is. Well, it sure is. And, and all this uh, mixed message, mixed message, mixed message. Well, well, how about you then broadcast the clear message from the government and there won't be a mixed message? Now, there was yet another hatchet job in the ABC's Media Watch uh, on me and other Sky News yeah. presenters last night. If Sky didn't exist, they wouldn't have any copy. I mean, uh, their ah. focus is just absolutely pathetic. I mean, it's just obsessive. Here's Paul Barry mocking the fact that in January I said, do not panic. This does not look yet like the great pandemic that I think will one day come. And indeed, the death rate here so far is way below what we were first warned. Have a listen to what Media Watch thought was so outrageous. In January, he was telling Sky viewers... I am pretty sure that a real deadly pandemic would look a lot more deadly than this. But by last week, he was as worried as the rest of us. Um, in fact, I said from the start, do not panic, but we must take precautions. It is dangerous, although I remain to be convinced it's as dangerous as the Spanish flu or maybe even the Hong Kong flu or, the, uh, or whatever. We, we shall see. Your response. Well, my response here is that Paul Barry himself has been contradictory because when the program, on the first program he, he did for the year, he didn't mention the, 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 uh, the virus, and nor did Q&A for the first three programs of the year. But Paul Barry mentioned it on the second program of the year, on the 10th of February. And what he said there was essentially pretty similar to what you said about a week earlier. He said, look, it's a problem, but we shouldn't exaggerate it. He actually encouraged Australians to go down into Chinatown and, and to, to mix with people in Chinatown and not have, any, uh, not have any concern that this might lead to contracting the disease. Now, from when he said that on the 10th of February, it was a reasonable thing to say, but what you said on the, a bit earlier in late January was also a reasonable thing to say. So what Paul Barry is doing is using, um, using this program as a proper gander outfit to go after people he opposes, uh, yes. but what he can't even remember, despite a staff of 10, a full-time <laughs> taxpayer-funded staff of around 10, he can't even remember what he said on his own program. Uh, Let's uh, replay. Uh, yeah. Let me play what he can't remember, because uh, yeah. Barry in February did attack some hoaxes about the coronavirus, which is good, so did I. But he also played down the obvious risk that we now know of the virus coming through our borders because of two slack monitoring, which still goes on. We had that cruise ship fiasco in uh, New South Wales only last week. Here is Paul Barry in February. Daily Mail has also offered us this exclusive. How Chinese students are avoiding the coronavirus travel ban and sneaking into Australia by lying on their departure cards and bragging about it once they clear customs. And on social media, the Mail was taking that further and claiming the lies could kill. So careless. They are putting thousands of Australians in danger of contracting the deadly virus. Angry emoji indeed. 
But, on a closer read, the story it relied on, a series of text messages from one student who claimed he'd changed his immigration form to say he'd arrived from Hong Kong, which is not subject to the government's travel ban. Students cheating the ban? Thousands at risk? A classic beat-up. But our border laws were too lax. People were cheating. We have paid a very high price and we've got thousands of people at risk. Jared, thank you for reminding us of this. I mean, if we're going to go pointing fingers, be careful you don't have four pointing back at yourself. That's all I can say. Uh, Jared Henderson, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.